Good afternoon, Jules fans, and welcome back to Jules in the Blood TV. As you can see, we are very lucky today to be talking to current top scorer, Tom Eaves, who's going to have a little chat with us about his career so far at the Jules. Um, firstly, Tom, thanks for joining us today. I no do problem. appreciate it. No um, so we'll get straight on with the questions. Um, first one is not directly linked to football, um, but more the social media side. Yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of access to footballers now, and you get more access to what fan opinions are. Yeah. Um, so how do you deal with that as an individual in terms of does negative press affect you or do you just sort of try and remain level-headed in terms of negative press or getting good comments as well from fans as well? Do you try and sort of yeah. stay in the middle ground a little bit? I think it's I think it's something that's that's prevalent in, in every sport at the minute. Um, obviously, you know, when people say negative things about you, it's, it's not nice. Of course, yeah. <laughs> it's not nice and you don't take to it well, but, um, you know, it, it's it's part and parcel of the game these days. Unfortunately, it's something that, you know, we need to zone in on. And, you know, when people say negative things about you and positive things about you, you just have to try and keep level heading and, you know, uh, remind yourself what the actual truth is of your own narrative almost. You know, course, keep, yeah. sometimes people come on and say things emotionally charged because we've just lost yep. the game. And, um, yeah, you know, you just, you know, you've got to keep yourself level headed. Level -headed. I see, yeah, sort of trying to yeah. find something yeah, exactly. on the ground all yeah. the time. Like, yeah. I mean, if you're getting praised because you've scored that trick, then obviously yeah, exactly. I but mean, then you yeah. know that one day you're probably going to have a shocker and you might miss an open goal, so you're going to get exactly it goes the other yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. I mean, fortunately, I, I had a dad who was pretty straight down the middle with me. So if I had a bad game and I scored two, he'd still tell me I had a bad game. Or right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Goals, or, yeah, which you know, is sometimes so probably a better approach to be exactly. You don't yeah. get ahead of yourself. Too exactly. Much, so, um, next question, Buzz. Um, have you always been a striker? Uh, Cleaning your height and your build it seems to be ideal, ideally suited to a target man, right? Yeah. yeah, I can see why people would make that um, straight away. I mean, target man. Personally, I feel like the the, um, the phrase target man kind of pigeonholes people, you know. And yeah, it doesn't. I suppose you know, it kind saying. of pigeonholes people instead of, you know, personally, I like to run in behind. And, you know, in this day and age, in this game, you have to just adapt to whatever the game is. Sure. So if, if I've got a defender up against me who just wants to wrestle all game, then I'll I'll try and do him with a bit of movement. If I've got someone who who wants to keep a high line, then yeah, we've probably you know, been a bit I'll, off. I'll we've sort of almost just turned around. No, 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 it's all right. That's a big thing to say because the way it reads yeah, is you just oh he's just a big no, player no, he's just going to win flick ons and yeah, there's not much yeah, else to it. But, yeah, no, I mean it's perceived that way a lot in this day and age. Already to us as Jules fans, there's a lot more to your game than that. So it didn't come across that. Have you always played as an attacking role? Was probably yeah. I mean, meant always, to say always more been than, um, in another position. Yeah, I think I've always been a out and out number nine. Right. Like from from a young age, um, as I say, my dad was um, like a, a coach of my local team. So I, um, you know, unfortunately, I was always the number nine. And yeah, I'm, I don't I don't really see myself in any other position really. I know I've had loan stints elsewhere where I've been played out of position and. Um, you know, I, I didn't really, really feel comfortable up there, and I don't feel it didn't utilize my strengths as much as I do when I when I play a central role in between the sticks. No, oh, so it's good, it's like you said, you're a proper number nine because that's yeah. that's almost gone away from the modern game yeah. a little bit now, like yeah. sort of Alan Shearer type game back yeah. a few years, which is great to see because you tend to see like the Barcelonas and that type you now. Yeah. Sort of, and it's good to have that fluidity, but you still yeah. need someone that's going to, like you say, stay in a six yard yeah, box exactly. and stick the ball in the back of the yeah, head. Yeah, take the defenders that way. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, right, next question. Um, you just mentioned it about a couple of loan spells that you had early on in your career. Mm -hmm. Is it fair to say that, that early on your, your career was pretty nomadic? I think I did a little bit of research before we come over, and yeah. I think it was six loan spells you had between 2012 yeah. and 2015, yeah, yeah. so varying degrees of success. Yeah, I, I think nomadic is probably the right word, to be honest with you. Um, the, you know, the thing with me is, especially early on in my career, uh, I could have sat there and just not played and just sat in the reserves. You know, but it's easy to do. Like, and yeah, I know a lot of, of people rot. You know the term rot in the reserves is, is thrown around quite a lot. But I always wanted to play play football. Looking back, uh, I took a few. I wouldn't say I regret the loan spells because I've learned a lot from it. Mm -hmm. But you know, were they right for me at the time? No. But I had to go and play football, and you know, you get pressure from the manager at the time to go out and play football because so he can free up his budget, bring people in. Of course, so you, you, you so know, it's not just always about you. Is exactly, it? it's it's not as black as white as it may seem, mm -hmm. as always. Uh, especially early on in my career, uh, and also when I did go on loan, and, and I did do well you know, at the time. You had some really good spells. Exactly, like Bristol Rovers and, yeah. and Shrewsbury. Because yeah. you, you went back to Shrewsbury though, didn't you? And it yeah, went, yeah. Didn't go quite as well. No, um, the, the first two went really well. Yeah, I got recalled, um, and then. I thought I might have been in with a shout uh, starting that season, the forthcoming season. 
you know, unfortunately for whatever reason, you know, I didn't get the opportunity, which I felt like I deserved at the time. Looked at football, um, and you know, I ended up taking a, a loan spell, which, which wasn't my decision at the time. Um, but you know, I went in the end, and I didn't play, and that, and that, and that killed me at the time because I was in, um, on a good run of form. Um, yeah, that's primarily the, yeah. the, the, the main reason you're being sent out. Yeah. I'm sure yeah, exactly. Home time, exactly. So you go to a loan yeah. club and you're, you're not, not getting, getting any minutes, minutes, and it's pointless. Pretty much, exactly. Yours, I'm sure. Yeah. And I, I think after that, I went to Shrewsbury, and I didn't do myself justice at all. I remember it. I actually put a bit of weight on at the time as well. I think I went up to like 90, 98 kilograms. I put a bit of weight on. Uh, I went doing myself justice. Um, to be honest with you, I went living right. It went in the right. I was living in a hotel, and all that was available to me, and it was the you know the hotel food. I couldn't cook, and I ended up putting quite that, a bit of weight on. Do as well because you because you're on your own and you don't probably yeah. And, and, and the results weren't going our way, you know. Be, human at the end of the day you know oh, you, you know yeah. but you know as i say it's, there's no excuses and you know i, I bounced back from that and uh, I, I had a <laughs> it was thing after thing for me really i had a, I had an injury a hip injury at the time which i was struggling with a niggling injury and i was playing through it and making it worse and uh, i ended up needing an operation in the end right. and um, consequently i had uh, the season at yoba last year which was the almost revamp if you like right. you know just sort of getting playing games and the full season of games which which i feel like done me the world of good yeah because i suppose if you keep going out and then back to your parent club and then exactly back, then it's all stopped I mean, it doesn't you're you know not getting any sort of rhythm i suppose exactly i mean it doesn't look great on your cv if you're going here there and everywhere but the truth was i just wanted to play football okay. i just wanted to play and i, I felt like i had a point to prove right N not to anyone else but myself <laughs> which is yeah, what you're saying if you've had that sort of upbringing with your dad as well like you're saying you're pretty straight down the middle then obviously you've had the the, the upbringing's been exactly. the right way, so you want to go out and impress, like you say, yourself, your family, and again, it probably goes back to the social media thing. It's great if you're impressing strangers, effectively, yeah. at the end of the day, but it's the, the people living around you that you want to impress first and foremost, exactly. and your manager. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah. No, it's good, it's really interesting. So, uh, Boz, next one. Obviously, you said you came in from your home, <coughs> and it's laces as well. Yeah. Probably fair to say we haven't seen the best of him yet. But yeah. Um, well, what can we expect when he gets fully fit? Yeah, he's been unlucky with injuries, hasn't he? Yeah, he's, he's been unfortunate. He had, he had a few knocks and then he came back in the team and he done really well. He scored. Uh, I mean, with Lacey, it, he, I think he won every every award there was at Yeovil at the end of last yeah, season. Yeah, we were so, very excited when he, when yeah, he so received so it. That song, speaks yeah. volumes in itself. Um, you know, he, he won every award. You know, he's technically very good. He's technically very good for centre half. So, you know, hopefully um, you, you'll see him sooner rather than later. Got some good competition yeah. in there yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, he's played right across the back well. Yeah, he's played in every position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got yeah, quite versatile. Gabby yeah. Gabby and Max have been really good in there yeah, so over the last few weeks. Very so it'd be probably harsh if you drop one of them. We've got Ben as well, Ben Nugent, who's been really good. Yeah, but it's good. I mean, I suppose it's good to have that the strength and depth in your squad. Definitely, it's, yeah. it's good to look and go, you know, you know I was putting in there. Well, I suppose because then it keeps everyone on their toes. Because exactly. it's absolutely like for yourself, if you was just the only number nine. Yeah. and you've got no competition then exactly. chances are you think oh well I'm going to be in the team if yeah. I'm playing well or not but if you've got someone breathing down your yeah, neck and you think I've got to keep scoring got to keep them yeah. contributing and performing all the time yeah. and that can only help obviously Gillingham Football Club certainly so. yeah um, obviously like we just said you joined back in the summer as well and you just mentioned last season at Yeovil was like your first season after them loan spells getting back and playing at, like consistently for yeah. one club but you only scored four goals yeah I think I read somewhere a few weeks ago you said that you hit the post a lot yeah. and the crossbar last season yeah. though. So yeah. you've not actually done a lot different yeah. in terms of how you play the game since you've joined Gilles. No. And another thing, did you feel any pressure in terms of because of your lack of goals last season mm -hmm. and also I think you was perceived by a lot of Gilles fans to be coming in and replacing a, a certain Cody McDonald yeah. who obviously is a yeah. bit of a modern day yeah. legend hero. Yeah, yeah. So did that put any pressure on you or did you just think, right, I'm going to go and do my own thing? Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's a funny thing. It, when, when you come into a football club like this, you have to deal with two things. You have to deal with perception and then your performance. Of course. So, I mean, primarily, all I'm focused on is my performance. I understand there's a perception side to it. Like you said, last year, I think I hit the post like eight times, uh, which, you know, it just happens. You know, sometimes you get the, the run of the green, sometimes sure. you don't. Um, but, yeah, with regards to, you know, Cody McDonald, he's, um, he's obviously a fantastic player. And, you know, I've seen some of his goals, he's got brilliant goals. I can't say I'm a I'm a similar player to him at all because I'm not. Well, no, obviously you're completely yeah, different in I'm terms of his size yeah. and stature, but yeah. generally fans go, oh, yeah. Cody's left, we're bringing yeah. in a striker. Yeah, yeah. So he's got yeah. to go and score the same amount of goals to, yeah. to be deemed a success or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Obviously we've brought in other types of players since yeah. then as well, like Connor and Liam. 
yeah. who's Liam's probably in the more similar mould to, to yeah, Cody and McDonald doing the way yeah. his size and how he plays the game yeah. as opposed to yourself. But yeah. obviously you was the first one to come in as a front man, I believe. So you yeah. fans sort of latch on to that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if a striker does come in, some obviously it's, it's natural to make that comparison. Is he going to get us then 20 goals? You know, I think pressure is something you develop on yourself. No one can really put pressure on you, no one put it on yourself. So again, it's impressing yeah. yourself, your, your dad, your yeah. family, I mean, your manager, you, the coach. You have to have your own almost like bubble, you yeah. know, your, your strength, your, your own strength and bubble sure. almost, and um, that, that's just how it is, yeah. yeah. So, with a team having failed to score in the first few games of the season, you must have been buzzing when you got that trick in South End. Yeah. Um, there's not many better ways to open your account for a new club, is it, than that? Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's it's always, you know, as a striker getting a monkey off your back and getting the first goal, they usually come in threes. Getting so our first goal and all. Yeah, I think, yeah. 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 I think, wasn't it? I don't yeah. think we scored until then. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a, a bit of relief, a sigh of relief, but I, I've got full confidence in myself that, you know, I am going to get the 20 goals that I set, that I set out to get. No, one ten so far, so it's not doing too bad. Yeah, I think you endeared yourself to most of the fake or the hat trick. Yeah. Although you got very lucky with a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to step up there and take it. Yeah, yeah. Was it? I think it was going in anyway. It was it? going in. Anyway. I mean, you <laughs> said it. You said it, not me. You just made sure going. by yeah, exactly. it in from about all of about yeah. three centimetres. Yeah. <laughs> that second, wasn't it? Between yeah. it rolled on line and going over everyone's lap. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? More out of scared that they were going to give it his own goal and you wouldn't get the trick? <laughs> no, that was because I seen Lee Martin on my back. Yeah, so he's going to pitch it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if he gets it away, he's going yeah. with it type thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, like you just said, you've almost answered my next question. How, how surprised are you at how well it's gone because you set yourself? 20 goals pre-season mm -hmm. and there was probably a few fans that went yeah is that a bit ambitious but again you've got a way of targets and you've got yeah, no faith yeah. in your own ability like you yeah. said you're halfway there so that, you must be really pleased about it's gone so far this season I, you know i'm not surprised um, i'm really not I, I, I genuinely believe a lot of the, the limits limitations and restrictions is are set on by other people and, and sometimes yourself um, I'm, no, I think it's great. We, yeah. We'd rather let people come out and show ambition and go, oh, we yeah. might get five or six. Cause yeah. Fans are going to go, oh, that's a bit under. Yeah. Well, at least you've gone, right, we're going to go big this yeah. season, fair enough. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm really not surprised at all. I, I, I put the work in. I really do put the work in. Well, that was the first thing we said pre season. That yeah. I think it was even right back to yeah. Fabrician when you made your debut. Because yeah. uh, obviously it was quite close to the pitch there, that little yeah. that sorters lane or whatever yeah, it's yeah. called. I remember you charging down there right back after about 30 seconds and the poor lad looked terrified in front of said you steam in the water after about half a minute and I thought, yeah, you did all right. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it's good to see. Yeah. Of the 10 goals you've got so far, <coughs> we've only ended up losing once. Obviously the Plymouth one was, we well, was our favourite, what was your favourite and why? Uh, favourite goal? I like the Charlton goal. Uh, Which one? The first one. So you scored both home and away, didn't you? Yeah, I enjoyed the first Charlton goal, but I also enjoyed the um, the very first goal, obviously, for obvious yeah. reasons. Um, and it's just I think we got that lower, didn't we, on last night? Yeah. That was the yeah, header at the back time. Well. Sorry, Phil, that was before you told me you weren't allowed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the Burns cross, wasn't it? Yeah. And then back across the yeah. keeper into the yeah, far yeah, corner, and then yeah. you scored the diving header straight yeah, after. Diving header, yeah. And then the, yeah. And then the long range effort for the. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd say probably. I said Plymouth. We were really unlucky. Like Boss said, we, we've only lost once when you scored. And yeah. You had that, uh, for me, it looked like a perfectly good goal. Yeah, well, well, it was. Yeah. Real, yeah. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't it was the second time in four days as well, wasn't it? As well, oh. we had Josh's at home to Oxford in the yeah. league trophy got disallowed as yeah. well. We couldn't believe it. They were the lot of fans, weren't they? Saying it across the line. Yeah. Yeah. I think even their so, official yeah. Twitter account yeah. said it looked like it was. Yeah, it. yeah, I think they did. Yeah, and I also had them robbed off me of Twitter. Um, off Twitter. Off Twitter. <laughs> off um, off Fleetwood. A Fleetwood as well, I had a header, and yeah. then I looked back on it and it wasn't offside. Oh, you were too disallowed that day, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. So. But then a lot of people said you look slightly offside at Charlton the other day and it gets yeah. given, so I suppose <laughs> oh, it's yeah, all yeah, swings and roundabouts. Yeah, exactly, too, exactly. So, no, I'd say I think technically your best one was probably the Plymouth Folly. Yeah. And no disrespect to you, and it, it comes yeah. back to yeah. people and fans' perceptions pigeonhole a number yeah. nine, but I think everyone, Jill's fans, sort of went, ooh. Didn't know yeah. he had that in his locker. He just smashed one in from twenty-five yards. But no, I mean, I think if people if people looked at me, me, me goals previously uh, at Bristol and Shrewsbury, I think all my goals were outside the box. And something mm -hmm. I actually wanted to work on was getting goals in and around the six-yard box, which I'm happy have done this season. Yeah. 
because I think I felt like I needed to get that into my game more. Yeah. We've I, said a few times, haven't we? Oh, yeah. We've seen you working hard again, and we're like, yeah. oh, Tom's working hard again, and then you put the cross in, and we're like, <laughs> yeah. but we almost yeah. lean in on the end of yeah. the cross as yeah. well. Yeah, no, I mean, I see people's frustration with that. Sometimes you, you get dragged out of position because you want to touch the ball, and but then you'd get, you want to try and you'd get moaned at probably by Lavel or Mark Patterson on the yeah. bench yeah. and the fans. Yeah, if you exactly. didn't chase it down and try yeah. and win it, you'd get yeah. moaned at for not putting a shift in. Yeah, so exactly. it's all swings and roundabouts. But yeah. I'd say, probably in terms of favourite and importance, my favourite goal was probably the Charlton one at home because it, it was our first win of the yeah. season yeah. as well. Yeah. So it's almost, almost well, at the time we was hoping it didn't quite work out, unfortunately, for AD after that, but mm. it got us up and running in terms yeah. of getting three points on yeah. the board. Um, right, next one. Um, we just obviously mentioned Steve Lovell. How different has it been since he came on board and took over? Because we've said as fans plenty of times, looking obviously from watching all the telly highlights and going to games, it's been really refreshing under Steve yeah. that we see now set up trying to win football matches yeah. and being given licence to go and play. Yeah. I know a couple of the other boys have said it's been great that we've just been allowed to go and do our thing yeah. within the confines of a system. Yeah. Whereas before, and again it's no disrespect to Adi or Peter Taylor because every coach has their own sort of yeah. approach to games. But it's been great for us watching it, us go and try and win football matches rather than just not trying to lose them. Yeah. Have you noticed a significant change since yeah, Steve I think came so. I mean, it's just It's just different styles of management. Of course. Um, you know, I, I, to be honest with you, I can't say a bad word about Edie Pella. You know, he brought me in and gave me an opportunity and um, you know, I'm very grateful for that. Uh, with regards to you know, different styles of play, I, I, I feel like I've got an almost a, a free role, I feel like. it's. Very expressive. I, I I can just express. It's nice to be able to just go out there and express yourself, which is good. There's not there's not an awful lot of um, restrictions in in terms of um, you know, other than defensively in sure. in terms of um, you know positional sense. There's not really a lot of restrictions. So you know, I I really enjoy that. So Steve just trusts yeah. you to go and play. Yeah, yeah you almost it's almost intuitively. You know, it's just that's what you instinct type it, of thing. Obviously, if you're enjoying it, then you tend to yeah. play better. And, Stuff happens off instinct more than I yeah. think when you're struggling. You start trying to think about stuff too yeah. much, and that's when it, it becomes a little bit more complicated, yeah. doesn't it? So yeah, that's good. <coughs> right, last one. So last last one serious one. <coughs> yeah. So Matt done some research last week. We've been averaging about 1.7 points per game since Steve took over. In the form guide, since he took over, actually fifth in the league. Yeah. How, how far can we go this season? Obviously, if we start winning at home, that's going to make a difference as well. Yeah. I mean, again, like I think. The ceilings that people put on are, are imaginary. Really, it's you, know, you can go as far as you want to go. You know, Josh uh, came out didn't he last week? And said, yeah, uh, you know, I admire him for doing that. Yeah. I admire him for doing that. Not, so. You know, why not say it? I, I feel like we've got the the quality. Certainly, we've got the quality in, in the squad to do so to go further. You know, we've we've proven against the bigger teams that we can get results. Even if you look at the Wigan game, you know, they they banged one in from twenty yards, top corner. Sure, well, we, we said that week, didn't we? Well, I think we just, yeah, we just started, I think that was the week where we just conceded worldies, didn't we? Yeah, we lost home to Northampton and we yeah. battered them for forty minutes. Yeah. I think it was I can't remember his name, was it the lad who came from Emily Donald's pal? Yeah. Smashed yeah. one in to put a yeah. one up and then Mark's got us level and then I think it was yeah. Macron's pinging that free kick off the underside of the bar. And you just yeah. think you can't do anything about no, it. Exactly. And then we had like you say, Sam Morsi three days later yeah. smashed one in from thirty yeah. yards. He's just thinking, what can we do? You, sometimes yeah. you just have to put it's your hands up. Yeah, that's what for. That's what so, we're all here for. <laughs> but generally, like you say, it, it was two defeats in the league in what three months? It, it, yeah. speaks, it, it, says, it yeah. says a lot about it, doesn't it? So yeah. it's, I still think, I'm not sure playoffs, I think we've left ourselves too much to do, but yeah. just because you've got to look at a lot of the top six, I've got to lose a lot of games. But yeah. I think the other day, we've lost less games than Portsmouth. Yeah. That's the frustrating thing, yeah. and how bad the start was. Now you just think, well, if we. Just picked yeah. up a couple of other wins early on, we'd have a great chance, but yeah. it's, it's not impossible. No. Yeah. Right, just got a few quick fire silly ones to okay. ask you. Um, obviously, I'm going to let the fans know you are a Liverpool fan, so yeah. these are all a bit relevant. Um, so I'm going to ask you a quick question, and you've just got to answer it off the cuff. Right, yeah. number one, who was better, Robbie Fowler or Steven Gerrard? Robbie Fowler. Number two, which teammate would you least like to be stuck in a lift with? Oh, there must be a few. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, Luke on the does he just get hungry? <laughs> Fair enough. If you had to wear one shirt for the day, which would it be? Everton or Man United? Oh, question marks. <laughs> Everton. Silla Black or Paul O'Grady? Silla Black. Silla Black, the original. This is from Boz. If the squad took part in a Royal Rumble style battle royal, who would be the last man standing? Me. 
Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> right, your top knot. I'm disappointed you've got your hair down today. Magical goal scoring powers or just too lazy to go to the hairdressers? Too lazy to go to the hairdressers. Fair enough. Josh Parker's blonde beard. Horrendous. Trendy hipster or big bleachy <laughs> mistake? Disaster. Absolute disaster. <laughs> yeah. Does he share bleach with Darren Oldacre? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> Probably. And last one. Who had the better moustache? Ian Rush or John Aldridge? Rushy. Done. Appreciate that, Tom. Thank really enjoyed that. Much. That was good fun. Yeah, Thank you very me. much. Yeah, thanks. Thank Cheers, mate. You can just send a message to the Jules fans yeah, before we go. No, I just um, I just want to thank everyone for your support and um, you know, long may it continue. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, as always, Jules fans, thanks for watching. Thanks for the ongoing support. We're now well over 600 on YouTube, well over 600 fans on Facebook. It is greatly appreciated from all three of us. And until next time, up the Jules.